Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about launching Delstar 2 and conducting the sea trials and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. So today's intro I've actually filmed at the start of the day rather than the end, so I really don't know what we're going to get done. Dave's just gone off to get some new batteries for the boat because one of them's not charging up properly, so put new batteries and get some spare fuel filters, a few things like that. So the crane is here, they're just about to launch a different boat, a sailing boat. Then after that we'll get Delstar back in the water. Our plan is not to leave today now, our plan is to do a full afternoon of sort of sea trials on the boat and see how it performs before we head offshore. Being colour, I can only presume this sound is one of the uh, latest models. It's in here. Whoa. Nice. New oil filter. You're going to fill it with oil? Yep. No, because <laughs> it's straight down one. Ah, uh, yep, yep. No worries. And uh, wipe a bit of oil on the. Yep. Bit of oil on. Where are my gloves, Stu? Where are your gloves? Your gloves are downstairs. I know. It's always the way in there. As long as you bought them, you don't have to wear them, you just have to yeah, buy them. That's it. Beautiful. Happy days. Alright, thank you, Dave. So, fill it, then tip it upside down. That's how it's done. Well, do you think I was Dave Pantley or what? <laughs> it was wrong, Dave. Oh, sorry. Okay, lining up. <laughs> lining up. Where's the uh, dipstick for down here to... We're missing a dipstick. Are we? Yep. Yeah. You're talking about Dave Pedley again? Yeah. Got the new batteries hooked up in series here, so 24 volt system. Then round here on the board, we can see a Redarc unit here, so I believe this is our step down from 24 to 12 volt. Yeah, 22 to 30 volt in, 13.6 out by the looks of it. Wind's starting to pick up now. The southwest, southwest, southeast, it's bearing to the east. It's actually quite a high. It's a little known can Thursday night. It's the highest at strong southeast. That's 39 kilometers. Yeah, right. So that's still two days away, isn't it? So it peaks in two days. Yeah, and then it's dropping off after that right, Thursday night. It's dropping off down to southeast, southeast at 22, and then it's pissing down to 20. Alright, so maybe we should just hold tight for a couple of days. Yeah. Wind's definitely picking up now, sorry if there's some noise, but uh, Crane's just getting ready to put it back in the water now. Can't get the engine started at the moment, but we can deal with that on the water. Usually tourists. Dave's just uh, painting up the last little bits of hull where the antifouls missed because of the blocks it was sitting on. It's lucky you're tall. Will that really matter what way it goes in the water? No, uh, preferably bow to the left. Huh? Face to the north. Yeah. yeah. Just hold your brush and let it swing. Forward to opening the hatch and seeing how much water's pissing uh, in. Yeah, that'll be uh, I couldn't see it. Nice. Look at that. It's only half full of water. New. All right, we're officially floating again. No water leaking from the stern gland, so that's good. <laughs> 
going to wire these batteries up, see if we can figure out the electrical problem that's stopping us being able to start the boat. <sighs> so, is the radio on? Has it got lights on it at all? Nothing. I'm just wondering if you blew the fuse. What about now? No, nothing. I'm uh, just wondering if you might have blown the fuse. Yeah, it? maybe. Uh, doubt it, because it was a short year, so it shouldn't have sent any current through the device. No, I've got nothing. Oh, you've got, a, you've got an on-off switch. And I've got one down here too. Yeah. What about your one? Is your one off or on? Mine's off. Right, I've got power up here, right? Okay, now have you got a multimeter there? Yes, I do. Alright, let's grab that. So the owner was saying fill the water strainer yep. to sort of prime the cooling system. Yep, so got something to pump onto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess we don't want to cook the impeller either. Paul's kindly come to help us again oh, today. Paul. You know, what we did Three cheers for Paul. Some water. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, right. a bit of seawater. This is where you need the uh, bucket and lanyard, Howie. Fire bucket, by regulation. Well, you need to get one of those. You're a regulations man, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Alright. Is that orange rusty coloured stuff coolant? or? <laughs> no, that won't be, that's all the water. <laughs> that might just be rust. Another one. That's looking better. That's looking good. Uh, there is an open seacock here. Open seacock. Yep. And you've got to check that the gears make sure we're in neutral. I'd hate to oh, start driving off the berth. <laughs> I think that's neutral. Right. That's good. That sounded good. Now see that. I'm I getting see, uh, feeling uh, pressure now. Yeah. You've got uh, oh, yeah. some water. Down there, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. it's drip, dripping now. It's coming through. Lock that one off. I have plenty in it, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I reckon lock that off and just crack an injector now. While we were working on our fuel system, the yacht that got launched just before us started sinking pretty quickly turned out that uh, hose was off the heat exchanger so there's a bit of a, uh, a warning for me when it comes to launching my trawler just to double check everything it uh, started going down pretty fast actually so they were lucky they saved it in the end using a petrol pump just trying to get some uh, cooling water at the moment we've been filling the sea strainer trying to prime it but no water coming out yet Clouds are rolling in. I thought they had rust, but I didn't. I've got the. Uh... Is that a gear? Is that a gear? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually got a fast idle. I haven't really talked about it yet, but the weather's going to be really bad for the next few days now, apparently. So we're going to head to a berth in the marina and just wait out the, the summerly. Now we've got a dolphin around the boat, which is nice. Where's he going to? I'm back in there. Oh, there he is over the other side. It's a shame, the first time uh, it came up was just here. Done a little U-turn heading back out now. Alright, all our issues are solved. Pat's giving us a push off, he's been a big help. See ya Pat, thanks mate. <laughs> Dave's first drive of his new boat ever. We've got a berth at the marina now, so we're just going to scoot around there and then uh, try and find somewhere to stay for the night. You going to back in? Why not? What could Do I have to be deckhand? Right? Yeah. Better find some deck lines, I guess.
just making a few final preparations now. We're stuck for a few days, so probably worth mentioning this stage about the prop shaft packing. Uh, it's not my boat, I don't really get a call on how things are done really, uh, but apparently these guys have always spiral wound it. The original packing that came out was spiral wound, new stuff went in that way. Uh, reading comments, I can really understand now the logic behind not doing it. Um, whether I've got enough sway to convince owners to do things a different way is another thing altogether. But uh, it does make sense that combined up and you've got enough force as you sort of try to spin it and expand it, you can kind of, you know, rip a stuffing box apart. I don't know whether they do it this way because it's such a small packing. It's about half the diameter of the packing in my boat, which I will definitely be cutting into rings. So, you know, that way it's my choice, so that's cool. Um, this boat, I think, is built about 1970, and from what I gather, it's kind of always been done that way, so I'm not expecting huge issues. But it was really interesting hearing people say why they don't do it that way. I, to me, I always love to hear the why, it's not just, oh, don't do that. I think, obviously, the worst case scenario is it all binds up and you, you know, essentially sink a boat uh, by having the stuffing box fail. But I think things like, oh, look, that prop shaft's going to last three times as long if you cut the rings, you know, that's that's valid as well if you intend to keep the boat a long time. So it was really good to hear the rationale behind cutting it. You know, that's not the way these guys have ever done it, but interesting to hear nonetheless. All right, a few things we've got to organise now. There's no anchor rigged up on this boat, which I think is really important to sort out. Uh, anchor, you know, a lot of these boats don't seem to have anchors rigged up because like, oh, we don't anchor. We go out, we, we fish and we come back. But anchors are really critical piece of safety equipment, so we're definitely going to get that sorted out before we go as well. So a bit of electrical wiring. Now we're actually just cleaning the boat up, getting all the stuff we don't need on the boat off and making sure everything that is staying is stowed somewhere safely. So, uh, just got some chain, shackle, this is really what's on board. Stainless isn't good to use underwater, it should be gal, but, you know, I'm just going to make it do with what we've got for now. Just going to try and crank it as hard as I can to give it a stretch in the threads. Actually, there's a little bit of the head here, I could probably just peen that as well. Although stainless isn't great underwater, dissimilar metal to this, nothing's going to happen in a two or three day trip, that's for sure. Now I'll just put a four or five figure eights with a model wire to mouse this. Guaranteed not to come undone for at least half an hour. I don't know if the microphone picks it up, but you can definitely hear the wind through all the rigging in the boats here. What we'll do now is I'll have a look on the computer and just show you the forecast for the next few days and when we're planning to go. This is my favourite weather app. It's just looking out the window. But another good one is uh, windy.com. So windy.com gives you a really nice visualisation of which way the wind's going. So down the bottom there's a timeline. So Thursday is today. So you can see here, this is Coffs Harbour, where we are. And we kind of have this sou'easter that we'd, or sort of south sou'east really, that we'd be punching into and it's stronger. But then if I go Friday, sort of east sou'east, Saturday a bit more easterly, and then you can see it's sort of turns as it hits the shore. Then you can see by Monday we've got this sort of nor'easter that turns pretty much northerly as it goes along the shore. So we'd have the wind behind us all the way back down to Sydney, which is going to be a lot more comfortable. So we go from a strong southerly we'd be punching into to a gentle northerly be behind us, so it's well worth just sitting in port. And you can see down here is the scale of uh, wind strength. So we've got this kind of green northerly compared to this sort of orange sou'easter. So the orange is getting up to about 30 knots by the looks of it, yep. So punching into a 30 knot southerly doesn't sound like a lot of fun. So as you can see the obvious thing is just to wait here for a couple of days. 
We're not in a huge rush and there's absolutely no reason to go pounding into a headwind. You burn twice as much fuel, you go half as fast and you have half as much fun. You know, it's, it's just a no-brainer. Okay, we're just going to do the fluid level check on the engine then fire it up and leave it in gear against the wall for a couple of hours. So, okay, head of tank. It's alright. All good. And your expansion tank looks good. good. May as well. So that there's fire. Is that, the, is that the first one in line? That is the one, that's the first one in line. Okay. So that is our water trap. I might just bleed that off. Yeah, have you got a jar? Yeah. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this boat's already been running for about an hour, wasn't it, Bert? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, with the fuel that was in the tanks. So the bottom of the tanks has definitely run through these filters by now. Dave just uh, went down, drained a bit from the bottom of the water separator, and there's no water in the diesel, so that's great news. Uh, gearbox oil this time. Which is good because yeah. when she starts, she'll yeah. Okay. yeah, that's good, that's all good. Fire in the hole. All right, we're just going to run it in gear with a bit of load on it for a while, give it a few herbs so it doesn't blaze up the motor. After that, I think we're done with the testing we can do here at the wharf and we'll go for a bit of a run. So the seal trials went well, boat went nicely in the bay, uh, shifts gears well, you know, everything seems fine. The only real problem it has at the moment is that it loses prime on the cooling water, so we need to sort that out. Uh, unfortunately though, very sadly, Dave's dad passed away last night, so we're going to have to head back to Sydney by train to, you know, for now. So unfortunately this uh, little adventure has got a bit of a sad ending, but um, you know, we'll be back. The boat's running nicely and, um, you know, we'll get it back to town probably in a week or so. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and I will catch you soon. See ya.